again everyone and thanks so much for joining us for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first on the hazardous warning chart here, the first graphic of the show, wind advisory still out for the northern Cusquam Valley and that's mostly or that is near the Alaska range for winds of 40 to 50 miles an hour in gusts. Uh, that's through tonight until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. High wind warning stays out here for the uh, remainder of the Alaska range for uh, tonight until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. That's for winds gusting above 70 miles an hour, mainly through the passes. Otherwise, out uh, to the west, St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait Coast, high surf advisory out for those areas uh, for this evening, overnight tonight, uh, actually through the day tomorrow, tomorrow night until, let's see, until about uh, 10 a.m. Tuesday, I believe. And that's uh, for, high, again, high surf that could result in possible beach erosion, and that due to the uh, high winds that are occurring out there. And moving on to the satellite uh, loops here, you can see uh, quite vividly the low center here tracking up toward the southwest coast this afternoon. Big mass of clouds up to the north and then across Seward Peninsula into the interior, and then back down with the uh, a, a frontal boundary coming down from the southeast interior back across uh, Kodiak Island pushing into the Gulf of Alaska and beginning to improve precipitation becoming more showery over the Alaska Peninsula of course eastern Aleutians with diminishing winds there but very windy conditions up across southwest interior and actually across southern Alaska into uh, south central today and areas in advance of the front up to the north with uh, rainfall amounts uh, pretty heavy here along the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula uh, today. And some of that uh, getting into the, uh, well, not quite as heavy as the Sitna Valley with the main front. That's, uh, as you can see, the front pushing northward, so precipitation ending with uh, skies actually clearing here through this zone into Cook Inlet, but uh, quite strong winds through Turnagain Arm this afternoon, gusting as high as 75 miles an hour. Uh, at McHugh Creek at the reporting station there. So pretty strong winds through the, uh, especially through the channel terrain of South Central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, south side of the peninsula, one to two plus inches of rain falling in the 12 hour period ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon with uh, again about a half inch in areas of South Central Alaska. Other areas, uh, a lot of areas saw less than that. Others a little bit more, but generally around a half an inch, about the same amounts out here over the Southwest interior as well. And uh, on the chart, there's that 982 low center right up to the southwest coast this afternoon, giving the uh, pretty strong winds here over the southwest interior. You can see with the uh, tight pressure field around that, uh, winds starting to diminish here over the permalofts during the afternoon hours after gusting 40 to 60 miles an hour earlier on out of the northwest. And here for the uh, southwest coast areas, uh, Clark's Point had gusts of 55 miles per hour. Well, Togiak, there to the west, 58 mile an hour wind gusts this afternoon. And Cold Bay, that occurred uh, overnight last night before the front. They had gusts to 65 miles an hour. So very windy conditions moving up into the uh, southwest interior. Again, as I mentioned, strong winds in Turnigan Arm. Also through the passes of the Alaska Range, anywhere from 40 to 65 miles an hour in wind gusts there. Less rainfall, uh, Kodiak Island, with that southwest flow, at least at the state airport, probably heavier for sure on the west and southwest side of the island. And then the heavy rains, as I mentioned, one to two inches or more falling during the day today along the south coast of the Kenai Peninsula areas. And lighter amounts over to the east and uh, windy day gusts uh, 30, 50 miles an hour in areas of the Copper River Basin. And again, the high wind warning out for the Alaska range. Otherwise, uh, not too bad up on the north slope there. Look like uh, some breaks in the overcast there with the uh, clouds banked up along and south of the Brooks Range. And also out over the Aleutians, uh, high pressure, light winds, but a lot of uh, low clouds and areas of fog, but no precipitation out that way. 
And the forecast for tonight, that low center drifts up over the Yukon Delta and then starts to become nearly stationary at that time during the overnight hours tonight. So it's going to stay windy and wet from St. Lawrence Island right down across Nunavak Island, southwest coast, northern Bristol Bay, much of the southwest interior wet. But the uh, windiest conditions would be where the lines are closest together, and that always uh, signifies where the winds blow the strongest. It'll be breezy through the Cuscombe Valley, and again, the wind warning out for the Alaska Range through tonight. Wind advisory out for the uh, northern Cuscombe Valley near the Alaska Range for tonight, and then the uh, high surf advisory, St. Lawrence Island, the Bering Strait Coast. That's for into Tuesday, so I'll be out uh, the longest. Otherwise, the heaviest rainfall will shift eastward there, really coming down to Yakutat tonight and begin to increase over the northern panhandle as well. Uh, down to the south, stays dry, but look for an increase in the clouds and uh, doesn't look like much precipitation at all. We'll get north of the Alaska Range here, be a pretty dry zone right through here along that frontal boundary, just clouds, maybe isolated showers, but nothing heavy at all. More precipitation along that uh, boundary from that low here, 995 millibars, and that uh, uh, trough back in toward the uh, southern slopes of the Brooks Range. Arctic coast, though, northeast flow, Probably see an increase in the uh, low clouds, fog, and some drizzle, even light rain possible over the north slope. And breezy, but uh, not too bad here over the Aleutians. This zone mostly north of the Aleutians. High pressure controlling the areas from Atka Island westward. It could be some clearing, but I wouldn't count on it. And then maybe a little bit of light rain drizzle on the lee side of the uh, Fox Island as well as the Alaska Peninsula. And the outlook for Monday, again, that low center doesn't move much. It slowly weakens here over the uh, Yukon Delta area. Pressure rises 994 millibars. It's going to keep it quite uh, breezy to windy and uh, generally wet, but look for the precipitation to begin to taper off to showers, and those will decrease here. A little bit drier air caught up in the flow there, but it'll stay rain periods of from northeast Bristol Bay into the Cuscombe Valley, eastward to the Alaska Range, on into the Susitna Valley uh, periods of rain tomorrow, and even the Cusco or the uh, the uh, where, uh, Palmer on up into the Manuska Valley there. Rain, especially early on, possibly tapering off in the afternoon a little bit, but showers lingering. Showers also lingering. Some could be a little bit on the moderate side for the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast. And looks like some moisture will finally get up into the eastern Tanana Valley, upper Tanana Valley, 40 mile country. Maybe not so much around Northway and Toke and the Besna and those areas or even in the Gulcana, but the winds will be definitely lighter tomorrow than today. And look for some moderate rainfall to occur over the northern panhandle with this frontal boundary sliding ever so slowly eastward. It stays dry down to the south, but there's a chance of showers in the afternoon even along the coast of Prince of Wales Island. It'll be kind of cool, cloudy, and wet up here in the northeast in the eastern north slope Brooks Range area with that trough there. Quite windy conditions, offshore flow results in partly the mostly sunny skies here along the northwest coast, even the western, western Arctic coast. And those strong winds continue through the Bering Strait to St. Lawrence Island, again, uh, keeping that uh, high surf advisory going through tomorrow and tomorrow night. And then it should begin to improve uh, during the day on Tuesday through this area with lighter winds, but staying dry, partly sunny skies, uh, Yukon Delta, out along the coast, up across Seward Peninsula looking dry and uh, not bad, up across the Brooks Range North Slope, even out to the Arctic coast. This slow drops southeastward slowly continues to weaken, so now it's just an area of light rain uh, from that center down to uh, Togiak Bay, maybe King Salmon, and then up along that trough looks kind of wet, light rain across much of the Tanana Valley. Eastward to the border, Copper River Basin, just a chance of showers, mostly cloudy, a few showers with a panhandle with light, light winds, and still breezy here with a trough swinging into the uh, Alaska Peninsula. And low temperatures for tonight, uh, Lower to mid-30s, Arctic coast and north slope into the Brooks Range. South of the mountains, upper 40s, lower 50s. Southward to mostly lower 50s here over the southwest interior in Bristol Bay. Mid-40s over the central Aleutians. Upper 40s for the Bering Sea. Panhandle, mid to upper 50s for your overnight lows. Highs tomorrow, uh, near 60 in the north to near 70 down south. And 65 to 70 over the eastern interior. Upper 30s, Arctic coast. Uh, 50s. To lower 60s everywhere else and the lows the following morning right near freezing there for the eastern central arctic coast otherwise mid to upper 50s for the panhandle 40s over the interior as well as the bering sea and then your high shaping up like this uh, 60 65 to sit in the manuska valley as well as the southern panhandle 40s 
Brooks Range in 30s on the Arctic coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Okay, first line weather graphic uh, showing a zone IFR out here south of St. Lawrence Island and then uh, VFR, St. Matthew Island, all along the southwest coast into Bristol Bay. Marginal VFR for the Aleutians. Good VFR starting the day tomorrow from, well, actually Bristol Bay all the way up to the Arctic coast, eastward into Canada, some IFR along the central western Alaska range. Also a big area IFR out over the Gulf of Alaska, Prince William Sound, down to uh, part of Kodiak Island in across uh, most of the Panhandle. And then by the afternoon, we've got uh, IFR northern, oh, two thirds of the Panhandle, the northern half, and then marginal becomes VFR down toward uh, the southeast. IFR, Brooks Range on out to the eastern Arctic coast and through the uh, north central interior here. Uh, looks like, um, oh, the, actually the Tanah Valley, central Tanah Valley back to the west. VFR, Kotzebue Sound, Selawik, Kobuk Valleys, IFR in across the, at least part of the Kuskokwim Valley there to the Alaska Range, more expansive out along the southwest coast, and also even more expansive than that out over the Bering Sea. And then for Tuesday morning, we've got IFR here from the southeast Bering, right up across the Kuskokwim Valley, Bristol Bay, northward, and then eastward there, say across the, uh, say from Tanana, East Northeast, uh, mostly over the White Mountains, and then marginal VFR for the remainder of the Tanah Valley, IFR south side of the Alaska Range into the Talkeetnas, Wrangell Mountains, all the way down the southeast coast, Aleutian, Southwest Bering, Southern Bering, all in the IFR zone. And then that breaks up a little bit here, but still a pretty good chunk over Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula up into the southwest interior, marginal VFR across southern Alaska, northward into the uh, Tanah Valley and uh, 40 mile country, at least part of it there, looks like it'll be VFR, better VFR here through the uh, upper Yukon, Koyukuk, Kobuk Valleys on out toward uh, Kivalina. And then marginal for the Arctic coast, IFR, all the Aleutians, Southwest Bering, marginal for the Perilofs, marginal for the Panhandle. And passes Anatovic, look for marginal conditions at times tomorrow, same forecast for Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill, I think it'll be a mostly IFR day on Monday with uh, rainy, uh, more marginal, windy marginal, and uh, Isabel also looking pretty marginal, but uh, make an optimistic forecast from Intestine and call it VFR there. And Tanita, marginal VFR becoming IFR, and then Portage, IFR from start to finish Monday, and Chilkoot and White, uh, IFR could start out marginal, but be mostly IFR tomorrow, and the freezing levels here showing uh, coolest air out over the Bering Sea, or cool air mass here over the Bering Sea with upper level trough, 6,000 feet down to the eastern Aleutians, and uh, 8,000 feet pushing eastward here into, uh, well, across the Susitna Valley in the coldest air up along the central Arctic coast, about 2,000 feet there, 10,000 right over Yakutat, and 10 to 12,000 to 12,000 plus across the Panhandle. Icing, a zone of uh, best chance of seeing some ice will be through this zone here from the uh, northern bearing with uh, some widespread moderate there into the uh, Yukon and Kuskokwim deltas, also along the Alaska Range, mostly along and or actually into the central Alaska Range, and then lighter icing possibilities across Copper River Basin and Cook Inlet, and then also a zone here from the central interior off to the northeast of the Brooks Range. Upper level wind flow chart showing an upper low tracking to the southwest interior today and this uh, late this afternoon. And then it sort of just uh, parks itself there for a little while. So we've got uh, the jet coming around west-northwest uh, up to 100 knots over the central Aleutians, taking a southwest flow into the northern pan at about 110 knots. And 9,000 foot winds, also a low there over the uh, yukon Kuskokwim Delta, give or take strong western northwest flow 45 to as high as 55 knots here coming around westerlies across the Aleutian range of 40 subtlies 25 to 35 in across southern Alaska 50 knots out of the southwest for the panhandle 3,000 feet uh, northwest 25 to 35 diminishing by the time you get to the Aleutians but 35 to 50 knots here coming into Bristol Bay and 25 to 40 over the southern Alaska range Turbulence wise, looking like this, uh, considerable moderate chop, especially for small aircraft, northern panhandle, up along into the Copper River Basin, 
all across the southwest interior, mostly the Cuscoquam Delta, Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, Alaska Range, Aleutians, and also from St. Lawrence Island up into the northwest. And after the break, I'll be back with the rain forecasts. Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. And joining us today, two more people to talk about the augmented reality sandbox. It's Alana Velaji. She's a University of Alaska Fairbanks mechanical engineering student, helped design and work on the details to make this new type of sandbox there. Thanks for joining us, Alana. <laughs> and Courtney Breest, she's the outreach coordinator for EPSCOR, which is the experimental program to stimulate mm -hmm. competitive research. It's a, a program funded nationally by the National Science Foundation, right? Yes. Okay. Alana, tell us about how you changed and adapted this version of the augmented reality sandbox. It's a really cool tool. So, Gina approached us with three goals for this new version of the sandbox. Mm -hmm. They wanted it to be compact mm -hmm. in a light system that could travel around the state. Mm -hmm. They wanted it to be child-oriented, okay. so we designed the sandbox to have three different levels. Okay. It's pretty cool. You can yeah. have younger children. You can have high school kids. Uh -huh. um, I guess I should say high school teenagers. Sure. <laughs> and then we also designed it to be more marketable, user friendly, so that this could be seen eventually in classrooms all over the place, all over the state. Okay. And you had a big hand in this, but this was a team approach, right? Definitely. It was a really good experience for myself, for George Stevens, who we'll see later. One of our hand models today. Yeah. For um, two other members who aren't here today, Cody Klingman and Austin Hunt. Uh -huh. And um, it was just a really good learning experience all around. Very good. And this is something that is part of your learning experience as well. So you get to check a box in your education. Yeah, right? it's a requirement for um, seniors of mechanical engineering at uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks. Very good. Very good. Well, it is a, is a wonderfully uh, inquisitive tool, fun to play with, and I hope to get my hands in the sand here in just a little bit. But it's also part of a bigger program, something that we were talking about a moment ago, EPSCOR, and that's what Courtney is here uh, to tell us more about. What is EPSCOR and why do you need a sandbox? Well, EPSCOR, as you mentioned, is a national uh, program. Mm -hmm. We're funded nationally, but we're actually located statewide. We're at UAF, we're mm -hmm. at UAA, we're in Southeast at UAS and she mentioned you know taking the sandbox as an educational tool and that's where our, I'm an outreach coordinator for the South Central test case. Okay. Our focus is on the Kenai watershed mm -hmm. and we are really interested in using these tools like the sandbox to interact with the students down there and get them interested in STEM and also communicate the research findings that we've been having throughout the state. Okay. And one of those, as uh, George and Eric are kind of changing the contours for us there from UAF to uh, maybe something that <laughs> resembles a little bit of something uh, more of the Kenai watershed, which is one of your focuses for the study, right? And, and specifically looking at some of the changes there and how that impacts people and also the salmon. Yes, it is a, all of our research is social mm -hmm. and environmental. Okay. So we have social scientists working hand in hand with our environmental scientists. One of the things we're studying is Upper Russian Lake, mm -hmm. and we have a researcher taking sediment cores from that lake. So one of the things we're going to use the sandbox to communicate is how the landscape changed over a long period of time, thousands of years, going from glacier, covered by glacier ice, mm -hmm. to being filled with water. And, then and that's what they're doing right now, exactly. So live. They're, <laughs> exactly. So, so they're cool. moving the water around. And then I think they've got some props over there because we're also going to go a little bit more in depth and explain how the salmon got there. Okay. So using there's these... there's the salmon. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I think there's a few more. <laughs> yeah, we so. like more salmon in Alaska. More salmon. Yeah, exactly. So it's really taking the findings from our research grant and just trying to connect with the community and translate it in a really hands-on and mm -hmm. exciting way so people can you know, interact with us as much as possible. Well, sure, that, that makes the learning and the science real and, and quite literally in your face rather than just some boring black and white paper that you have to read about. This is something that people can understand better because it's visual and they're touching and feeling and seeing these changes, right? Yeah, and get them engaged. And mm -hmm. then uh, outreach is a huge component and working with the younger students and actually even, I mean, working with the UAF graduate mm -hmm. and uh, engineering students is it's a huge part of our grant and our we really enjoy it. Oh, it is wonderfully exciting. And so, Alana, you were telling us that this is built to travel. Right. And this is built to do more things in version one. Where can this type of project go in Alaska? And what can it demonstrate? 
I mean, we were hoping to eventually get to villages that were harder to reach, mm -hmm. um, that you couldn't necessarily move a whole fixed instrument to, right? right? You need something that can pack up, fit in your truck bed. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, one of the, the most attractive parts of this project is that this was going to be something that was used past our, our graduation point. You know, this okay. is going to some, be something that lives in the state for years. Right. Right. Well, it looks like you're well on your way with that. So what are, uh, give me another example. What else can this show us? We've talked about the, the Kenai River watershed. What's the coolest thing that you've played in the sand with? What, what's your idea? Well, I definitely enjoy the props, but we also like kind of building up a giant mound. And uh, if you put some water behind it, you can make a, a little uh, runway, I guess, and, okay. you know, demonstrate the effects of the hydrology by just letting kind of putting up a dam and letting it all pour right down okay. and so that could I think you mentioned it earlier you could even demonstrate the effects of a tsunami right or okay. something along those lines so it's not just topography but it's also hydrology yes. and coastal surge mapping and some of the coastal changes that we're seeing here in Alaska and seeing what the smaller changes in the sandbox might do to kind of a real effect of a slosh or a push of water up on the coast mm -hmm. uh, tsunami inundation mapping or even glacial dam release as, as some uh, has been demonstrated before. Yep. So, oh, wow, that's you know that's just an impressive thing. That it seems like the possibilities are nearly endless with this, and probably even more ideas that are popping up in your head too. Yeah, as we speak. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, if folks want to get more information about EPSCOR, uh, you guys are online. You're on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. Uh, A K E P S C O R, right? EPSCOR, uh, Alaska EPSCOR, that is. Mm -hmm. And again, you guys are funded by the National Science Foundation, yes, so sir. more to come from that and a, and a longer term study there. Thank you, ladies, uh, for joining us today. Uh, congratulations on your hard work there. This is really fun. And uh, for now, mm -hmm. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder uh, with this edition of Alaska Weather Facts, and I'm going to go play in the sandbox there. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at today's sea ice analysis. We've got uh, really not much change from yesterday. This area of ice through here is going to not change much for uh, quite some time. And it's continuing to see melting occurring up north of that zone and between another heavy area. So basically in through here, continued slow thaw and melting, thinning out for the next uh, several days. Otherwise, no big changes coming up uh, anywhere else. Moving on to the coastal water forecast. South, southwest 20 to 25 on the south coast. Uh, west 15 for Clarence Strait. Small craft advisories to Stevens Passage. Southerlies at 25, gusts 40 knots. Even stronger up there, Lynn Canal, northern Lynn Canal. Storm force gust of 55 knots. Otherwise, gales with eight foot seas. And small craft advisories on the north coast, southwest 25 to 30. Seas 13 feet. Tuesday, those come down west 15 to 20 and 15 knots on the south coast. Seas running 10 feet in the north to 12 feet down south. And Clarence Strait, west 20, seas 4 feet, south 20 for Stevens Passage with 4 foot seas. And still a pretty stiff wind out of the south for Lincoln Alba, not as strong. Good for small craft advisories for those 30 knot winds. Prince William Sound tomorrow, south winds, 20 knots, seas 3 feet, southwest uh, 20 for the eastern north Gulf Coast, picking up to uh, southwest 25 here back across the Barren Islands, 12-foot seas in those zones. Southwest 30, Kamishak Bay turns southerly here in southern Cook Inlet, about 30 knots, 10-foot seas, gales out for northern Cook Inlet tomorrow, south 35, seas 13 feet. Tuesday, that comes down to 25 knots and seas subside to 7 feet. Still pretty windy south of the foreland, southwest 30 with 8-foot seas, 25-knot winds for Kamishak Bay as well as the Barrens, and small craft advisories for southwest winds 25 to 30 for the North Gulf Coast, and south winds at 10 with 2-foot seas for Prince William Sound. And Kodiak Island, uh, east side, southwest 25, Shelikoff Strait, gale force southwesterly, seas up to 11 feet, and uh, Sitkanak to Cape Sarachev, we've got west winds 25 knots there with 12 to 14-foot seas, uh, Gale's holding on to Bristol Bay tomorrow, 35 out of the southwest, otherwise 30 knots on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. And then for Tuesday, Alaska Peninsula, west 25, and southwest of Sitkanak, west 20. Small craft advisories, Kodiak Island for southwest winds, and Bristol Bay, 25 knots from the west, and seas a little bit lower at 10 feet. 
And for the Western Aleutians, Wednesday light, west-southwest 15 knots from roughly near ADAC westward. And then 15 to 20 knots for the central Aleutians, picking up a little bit 2025 for Alaska Island. And for Tuesday, small craft advisories, west 25 there for Alaska Island, northwest 20, Umac Island. Central Aleutians, 15 to 20 out of the west. And uh, kind of a westerly, the southwest flow out here, 10 to 15. Pretty light winds for the next couple of days out in those zones. 40 knot northwest winds, St. Matthew Island turn west at 30 for the Pervolos, but 45 knot winds from the west blowing into Cuscoan Bay. 40 knots north of Nunavik Island turn northerly at 35 for St. Lawrence Island. And then uh, a little bit lighter, but still north becoming northwest at 20 to 30 knots in these areas of seas, 9 to 10 feet, maybe 12 feet for St. Lawrence Island. Beaufort Sea Coast, basically north uh, here from the central coast to demarcation point, 15 knots. Small craft advisors on the west side, northeast winds, winds at 25. Gale force winds from Cape Beaufort all the way down to the Bering Strait. And for Tuesday, 30 knot winds from Wales to Cape Thompson, Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, 20 knots out of the north. Otherwise, westerly winds for the remainder of the Arctic coast at 10 to 15 knots. For tonight, uh, that strong low pressure area, Moves up to the Yukon Delta and then stalls, becomes stationary. So lots of uh, wind and rain tonight with the uh, high surf advisory out for St. Lawrence Island, Bering Strait Coast, possible beach erosion, and uh, of course higher than normal tides, heavy surf, and rain moderate on the upslope areas here of the uh, Kuskokwim uh, and Alaska Range mountain areas and heavy rain shift eastward slowly. Uh, so lightening up over Prince William Sound, the Kenai Peninsula, and uh, increasing over the northern panhandle. See, tomorrow that front brings some uh, heavy rain. Again, the gale force or the gale force winds and storm force gusts into Lynn Canal, better conditions down south. Wet and windy over the southwest interior, not as bad over south central Alaska as far as the wind goes, still occasionally wet. And then for Tuesday, that system slides southeastward here and weakens. Uh, so it dries out over the Yukon Delta, not too bad up here in the north and northwest with uh, rain in the Tanana Valley, back into Bristol Bay, and some uh, mostly cloudy skies in the Panhandle. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.